This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad. And welcome to trying to climb on a ladder for an intro for a YouTube video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I paint one of those uh, Slytherin Space Marine dude robot guards. So let's just take this over to the painting desk, shall we? Often, I get asked to paint many different schemes for the space robot men that uh, seem to have started to paint in the beginning. And one of those schemes is for the Slytherin team. I think they call these guys the Salamanders. Now, of course, I know nothing about the Warhammers, but I do know a thing or two about colors and how to uh, maybe paint in some sort of possible fashion. If you would like to find out how I paint the Salamanders for the Slytherin team of the Warhammers, then uh, stick around and watch this video. Also, don't forget to leave a like and leave some words in that little square box that YouTube gives you to leave words in because this helps the algorithm, I think. I don't really know. I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. Let's just start painting this model. So while you weren't looking, I primed this model black and I gave it a white ink volumetric highlight over the top of it. I then added an oil wash. This time I used blue for my oil. And I was hoping that this was gonna add to the final result of the model. Once the oils had dried and I'd wiped off all the excess that I didn't need, I took a transparent green from Vallejo and I sprayed this over the top of the model. I pretty much aimed this mostly at the hard points. When you paint the white before this step, you wanna make sure that the whiter parts are gonna be the brightest parts of your armor. And the reason for this is because the green will be more strong over those whiter areas. In order to shade this and give it a nice deeper look, I'm going to tint the blacker areas with a green ink from Vallejo. These game inks are really good for doing things like this. The tints are really nice and strong and the inks themselves have got a really good, strong presence on the model. I then take matte black and I paint all the parts on the model. And the reason I do this is because when you paint these parts black, what happens when you paint over the top of them, if you don't paint all the way to the edges, you have almost like a recessed shading for free. It's something that really I've found has made my job a little bit easier in painting models. Maybe it's a lazy way. I'm not really sure if it is, but, but when I'm painting lunchbox packing picnic going space robot men, I feel like I just want to cut certain corners that aren't actually necessary. I'm not painting for any competition. I'm painting because I enjoy putting these things together and I like painting them because if they're gray, they're not the best of looking things on your shelf now, are they? I realized halfway through that this dude had a black pauldron. His pauldrons aren't green. So um, with a bit of a boo-boo, I ended up fixing that by doing a wet blend of black and gray to give a little bit of a highlight to the top of the pauldron. I then took those little water slide decals that you can get in the boxes that come with these little models. And I stuck a couple of them on to his shoulders because that makes it look cool, doesn't it? I then used Galleria matte varnish this is one of the easiest varnishes I've ever used for painting in this stage. This is not a permanent varnish, so don't use this if you're trying to seal off a large statue or something. It's a good interim stage just to kind of lock in some layers. Working on the details of the model, I'm going to do a lot of dry brushing techniques, which are quite simple techniques, but I'm going to kind of dry brush things, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to layer over the top of those later on. I work on things around the face, all the little like nubbins and things. I don't know what he's got on the side of his head. I'm pretty sure he's stuck in the 90s because he's got this serious antenna. So he must be trying to broadcast from one friggin' planet to another. I don't know, but I painted that little radio on his head as well as I painted his eyes. And let me tell you, these little space robot men eyes are something to behold. They are really difficult to paint. And this is just because the paintbrush isn't freaking small enough, no matter how small the paintbrush is. I then worked on some of the edge highlighting. Now, a lot of people who watch my channels or even follow me on social media will know that I like to overdo things. And white highlight edges, while they are looking kind of white, they're not actually white. I mixed a little bit of the green into this just to dull it down just a little bit because pure white would be absolutely ridiculous. Even I can admit that. But I went over and I edge highlighted almost every single panel that I could. And this is just because I really like the look of these things being rendered that far. I would love to take this further and add chipping and all those kind of effects, but I don't feel like that is a step 
that most people would be doing especially if you're painting up an army or something like that i would certainly not do that if i was painting a whole friggin army of these dudes but i am working on how i can add textures and things in a slightly faster fashion rather than wasting a lot of time trying to work out where they go and when i do figure that out i will share what i learned with you guys as well working on the base i did the same thing i did for all my space marines and i literally just put one of them technical paints on let that dry and i slapped in a whole load of wash and because he's a green man obviously red was the only answer for the color of the base it just makes sense doesn't it I then start to work on some of the other details around the model. What these grenade things that are on them, I gave them, I wouldn't say it's a dry brush. My brush isn't dry completely, but it isn't wet or fully saturated with paint. And what I'm doing is just kind of brushing it against the parts. And because the paint is on there, it's giving the effect of dry brush without too much of a grainy effect. I really don't know how to explain this, but it just understand it's not dry, but it's not wet either. It's super easy to do this. It helps keep the recesses dark, but at the same time, you get that nice, lovely color on the raised edges. I work on the weapon by using a dry brushing technique this time because I want it to look a little bit more scatty over the weapon just for a little bit more of a brushed effect and then I'm going to start painting some edge highlights this time using pure white because I want those edges to stand out super crisp. They're in the foreground and they're going to push forward over the other highlighted edges on the model. I used brass and copper to paint the different little scope things that are on his gun. I have no idea what these things are. All I know is they're there, but I need to make them look cool. So I added white to them as well as some fluorescent colors over the top of a couple of them. Some of them look like lenses. I painted them the same colors as ours because I felt like that just made sense. I don't know why it made sense, but that's what I did. I then used a pigment powder over his feet and a little bit of dust up on the shins and near the knees. And that's pretty much where I felt like I could call this model done. Hopefully you managed to take something out of this video that might help you painting your own little plastic spacemen. Now we are at the end of another video and of course I'm super grateful for you watching to the end of the video. This is really really awesome. Thank you for your great cooperation in this matter. It is usually at this time that I say a super special thank you to my patrons for their support over on the Patreon. Now, we may have not got any new patrons this week, but that doesn't stop me from saying thank you again to those who have supported over the time. I appreciate your support more than you can imagine. And it's because of that that I've decided that I'm going to start giving back to my patrons as little as I can for now. And as we grow, I will start to give back more and more and more. To start off with, I'm going to be giving away one of these fairy flesh set paint sets from the Vallejo variety. Now, of course, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I use this paint to paint almost 90% of the skin tones that I paint in almost 90% of my videos. Now I know that I don't use this in all the videos that I do, but this is a very, very important set to me personally, and that is why I stocked up in it in my store. If you'd like to check out my store, you can look at groundaffected.com. However, I can definitely advise if you are not in the UK, you're probably gonna pay a little bit more for shipping than you would like to. Also, don't forget there is that little thing called tax. And yes, we got a little bit sidetracked with that little ramble about things, but I'm going to give away one of these paint sets to one of my patrons. I'm going to choose them completely at random. There will be no favoritism. It's not going to be my choice. I will put names or a number or something into the computer on some kind of a website. And this will allow me to choose someone at random. I will contact that person and then I will send it to you. 
if you are in a place that is literally too obscure to get to, like some kind of small island off of the middle of no nowhere, then this may be a bit difficult. However, if you are in one of the major cities or anywhere that a post office man can literally walk to your door, then there is a huge chance that I can get this paint set to you. And because you are my Patreon, I will not be charging you for the shipping, nor will I be charging you for the paint set itself. This is going to one of my Patreons. Make sure if you're a Patreon, leave some words in the Discord, leave words in this video's comments, because that's very important for this thing called engagement, I think. Now that we're at the end of the video, I get to tell you the best thing of all the videos. And that is when I get to say, if you don't like anything you saw in this video, nothing I can do will change that. Other than you not watching the video or kindly just f***ing off. Now I hope that video helped all these people asking me about the little green men. I mean, serious dudes, you really want to paint green men that much?